small, we have a, around 9,500 hectares of woodland across the whole of the National Park. Of that 9,500 hectares, around two or 3,000 is ancient or other semi-natural woodland. We have some very extensive coastal woodland, in fact some of the, the longest areas of unbroken coastal wood in England. Elsewhere we have some very extensive areas of highly productive conifer plantation. We have England's tallest tree, a Douglas fir in Dunster Forest at 62 metres high. Another defining characteristic of the National Park is the farmed landscape which is defined by these ancient beech hedges and in some of the deep lanes where you've got an old beech hedge either side of the road it forms tunnels and is a particularly attractive feature of the National Park. Traditionally these oak woods, these upland sessile oak woods would have been managed quite intensively for, for tan bark and charcoal. The decline in some of the important bird species and the heath fritillary butterfly for example they've declined following the decline in traditional management. What we're trying to do here is trying to reinstate some of that kind of management. Here we are in one of the coppice plots. Coppicing involves felling a tree down to the stump and allowing it to naturally regenerate. The objective here is really a conservation objective, trying to encourage and develop habitat for the heath fritillary butterfly. The type of activity that a visitor might encounter walking through some of Exmoor's woodlands would include work such as coppicing, thinning, we'll have volunteers working, checking nest boxes, you'll see stacks of dead wood lying about which to some people may look a little bit untidy um, but nature doesn't mind a bit of a mess and some of these dead wood stacks will be colonised by dead wood invertebrates, fungi. So here we have one of the wood ant nests. We have about 70 or 80 of these wood ant nests in, in Hawkoom Wood. These wood ants exert a huge influence across the vegetation and the, the other animal communities. It's difficult to overestimate the importance that some of these woodlands would have had historically and culturally to the people of Exmoor. I think in many ways we've now lost a bit of a connection with these places, which would have been unthinkable for centuries. And uh, I think one of our challenges for the next few years is to try and re-establish that kind of connection that communities and people have with these woodlands and understand just how important they are to people's lives.